Welcome to the Naughty Child Podcast with me, Richard. And me, Polly. I'm the dad. And I'm the daughter. I did everything before I leave. I need to find that bag of mine. Alex Hartley took us off air in Brighton earlier this year. I'm a huge fan of Pepper. We thought we were really funny, so why doesn't everyone else think we're really funny? <laughs> it's been the longest year ever, hasn't it? She's the most relaxed captain you've ever known. <laughs> you got me through my flight from Mackay to Adelaide, so thank you very much. Well, my dog is now called Judy Anderson. <laughs> oh, well, Manchester Originals aren't supposed to be eliminated, yeah. so I've got to change my team. Yeah. Sophie Eccleston's the worst. It's like having a child with you when she's on tour. I don't know whether it shows something about me or whether it just shows I'm a little bit stupid. What a week it has been at the Women's Cricket World Cup. I can't I can't believe it's almost over. Only two games to go. Yeah, and we need to firstly talk about the South Africa India India game. So I was actually having a driving lesson at the time. So I was listening to it mm-hmm. and thinking, uh in fact I couldn't get any commentary on it. There's at no all. commentary on it because it just wasn't being covered because I guess it was an England game and they're only covering. But that's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's annoying. So, uh, yeah. so what I did is I found a gorilla commentary on the <laughs> internet with some South African guys <laughs> <laughs> doing a, a commentary from mm-hmm. the TV feed. Yeah. And um, it was just amazing. Mm. Absolutely amazing. And for Mignon Dupria to be oh. there at the end, uh, caught off an O-ball and then hitting the winning runs to knock out India. It was crazy. I mean, because I got back from my lesson and the first thing I was like, I need to know about the score. And you were just like, I need to talk you through the last over. <laughs> because, and then when you said Mignon got out, I was like, well, well South Africa, like, how did they win? And then, then you were like, oh, the noble. And that noble has been kind of controversial. Because also, I think it's a uh, West Indies umpire that called the noble for people. But it definitely was a noble, because yeah. I have that was off ground uh, when it was over the crease. But seeing the reaction from the West Indies, like presumably like the hotel conference room thing was just amazing and who was it that was just sat there in silence I was watching the video everyone else was jumping on each other and really excited so it's Stefani Taylor maybe oh yeah I think it was yeah that makes sense she's captain Mm -hmm. she's a cool calm collective (laughs) um well so yeah well they did get through to the semi-finals and then they got absolutely hammered this morning by Australia that was a hammering yeah that was astonishing I mean Australia are formidable aren't they yeah, and this this is the thing. It's like, would I rather us get out in the semi final to South Africa in a really close game, or go through to the final and then get absolutely hammered by Australia? You want to be in the final because you've always got well, a yeah, chance. Yeah, ideally, you've always yeah. got a chance. And you know, we we're not Australia. We're going to beat us more mm. often than we're going to beat them. Yeah, based on ability of players mm. and form and, and yeah. so on. But we're due a win against them, aren't we? Yeah. Mm. It'll be interesting to see. I think, yeah, I think Australia were almost guaranteed to get through to the final when we mm. found out they're in the semis, especially because they're facing West Indies. Mm. And that's not to discredit West Indies. It's more, you know, throughout the tournament, they've either won by 150 runs or lost by 150 runs. And they had a losing day yesterday. Um, but I think England versus South Africa, will be a lot closer mm. um, and that'll be really interesting to, to see. Effectively you got the batter of the tournament playing for South Africa yeah, and the bowler, bowler of, of the, the tournament, tournament playing for England. Uh, that's the thing and um, I think with South Africa if you can get rid of Laura Wolvart quickly and if the batters can hold up against Marazine Cap because last time she got five did she go Pfeiffer last time? Years? She's had Pfeiffer, yeah. yeah. That one, I think that was in the England game. Mm-hmm. If you can, if those, I guess, two key players can be stopped, mm-hmm. then I think we stand a chance. And if the batting goes well, um, I presume they'll keep the same selection. I guess there's questions that, are you going to bring Charlie Dean in or not? Um, I think mm-hmm. well, I think she should be in because yeah. she's taken a lot of wickets. Yeah. I, but, I think Charlie Dean would make sense. Yeah. Um, and I guess Tammy Beaumont, Heather mm-hmm. Knight. Yeah, Nat Siver. Yeah. I mean, Nat Siver's got a century mm. already, hasn't she? But yeah. uh, Tammy Beaumont, I mean, uh, 
<laughs> tell me, and the night. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it, Heather Knight. Yeah. They need a big score. Yes, um, definitely. And so the knockout stage would be the time to do it. And this is the thing. It's like when Tammy Beaumont's in form, she is destruct, destruct, I can't say it, destructive. Mm-hmm. And I just, I really hope the best side of England uh, play today. I I really hope so because, um, yeah, I just, I just hope everyone turns up. And even if, you know, for example, we saw, I think Amy Jones the other day did quite well. And she's been quite out of form mm-hmm. recently. Um, I hope that if there is a slight batting collapse that you know the middle order can actually hold up and it's not again reliant on Eccleston, Shrub, Sol and Cross <laughs> because th- I mean to be fair in the semi-final in 2017 and you hit the winning runs I'd be very so, happy if Shrub, Sol, yeah. Eccleston and Cross do not bat at all I again in the tournament joyful <laughs> <laughs> it'd be very good um, but you never know but I remember when we interviewed Kate Cross the very yeah. first time over a year ago, mm-hmm. one of my questions for her was... Would you ever bat? Like, yeah. why do you have so many bats? Do, do, you, <laughs> do you even own a bat? Uh, <laughs> yeah, because she has, like, a sponsorship and gets, like, six bats quite regularly. Mm-hmm. I was like, do, do you even use them? <laughs> um, I remember thinking at the time, I was like, oh, you can't ask that. But, I mean, to be a valid question. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Should we talk about India? Yeah. Mm. Really disappointing tournament. Yes. Them. They got their selection wrong. Yeah. Um, That's what we said from the start. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it was nice to see Shafali Verma get some runs yeah. in the final game. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think not taking Jamima Rodrigues yeah. was a mistake. I think Jilin Goswami got injured yeah. in the final game. Always difficult to replace. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can't, could, you can't replace Bandy that. would have been ideal. Exactly. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, I was open to the thought that I don't know the full makeup of Indian domestic cricket. Mm. The selectors do. If there are players better than Jamima Rodriguez out there, yeah, bring them that, in. Bring them in. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> there wasn't. But there and I just think Matali Raj was extremely disappointing over the tournament. I mean, most of her results were single figures. Um, and yeah. I think a lot of people are speculating that it is um, Goswami and Raja's like last. You would think so. I mean, I mean, with age as well. Yeah. And, um, but then like, there's a question of the captaincy. I, I mean, I think Harwan Precor will get it. A few people say Smriti Mandana, but um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, Harmpri is the T20 captain, yeah. isn't she? So that would make sense. And she vice captains a lot, and she says so she's got experience, and she's been in the yeah. team for a while. Um, yeah, I just think they need to make some changes within that team because if you compare it to like the 2017 team, it, I just think where most teams have gone up, they've gone a bit down. Um, Women's cricket globally yeah. needs India to be strong yes because it's such an important mm. marketplace for the game yeah. and the 16 IPL coming up yeah you know they'll be back mm. they've got strength in depth yeah they'll, they'll be back but it's been disappointing yeah. you know and I suppose you know England have had disappointing World Cups in yeah. the past and have, and have come back and have won it so um but it would be great to see them back strong and it would be great mm. I guess to see players picked on the basis mm. of uh, form and ability. Yeah. Whereas at the moment, I sense that selection is quite political. Oh, 100%. This, like, this is something we've mentioned before a bit, but yeah, I definitely think it is an issue. Um, but yeah, I, I, I guess we'll see. And I mean, it, it was interesting to see on Twitter. Um, I think also because of the nature of what cricket means to people in India, mm-hmm. but people saying how heartbroken they were and how well the team have played. I was like, right, right, right. Take a step back. <laughs> I was like, the thing is, for me, if India, uh, if if England hadn't got through to the semi-finals, don't get me wrong, I'll be disappointed. But like, fair enough. We played really badly. I think similarly with India. It's like they didn't. I don't think England really deserved to be in the semi-finals for at some in some ways. I think some ways, obviously, they did. They won their last four games. That's what they needed to do. But with India, I just don't think they deserve to be in the semi-finals. They beat Pakistan, Bangladesh, and West Indies. Yeah, 
the the easiest thing to beat. Um, and yeah, I just I'm probably gonna get like slaughtered for having to go to the India team. <laughs> Well, we love the India team. We do. That's we, the thing. We really so love that's them. my frustration. I wanted them in that yeah, semi final because, yeah, but especially you know seeing them at the twenty seventeen World Cup final, like yeah. that's so. In fact, important. my dream was they got into that semi final, beat the Aussies um, for us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would have to face Australia. Australia. <laughs> exactly. You know, like similar scenario to last mm. time. Um, but yeah, it wasn't meant to be, and I guess. You know, as as sad as it is that there was that noble, I mean, it's part of cricket. You you mm-hmm. can't make those sort of mistakes, but yeah. um, it's just one of those things. Um, so yeah, the final. Well, in fact, the semi final is happening tonight. It's recording on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. The final is on sa- Sunday. On Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Um. So I'm going to be in Wales, and I am not happy about it. Ha- the thing is, right. If England get through to the final and England win, how am I going to celebrate England winning in Wales when I'm not with people who know about cricket? Will you have any signal on your phone or anything? See, this is what I'm concerned about. It's like, what if the campsite doesn't have signal? Because I can bring the little radio and I can bring my phone, but if there's no signal, I actually don't know what I would do. Because I tried to change the dates when they were first proposed, but my voice wasn't strong enough <laughs> apparently cricket wasn't a good enough excuse for it to be moved um you know i think i'm gonna bring england cap so i can be sitting in the tent freezing because it's supposed to snow um yeah you've not picked a great weekend for it no it's gonna be Just absolutely it was freezing. in no means my choice and if it was i would have changed because i said right at the time when this was all organized i think it was back in like october or something I was like, well, do you know what? It's going to snow at the start of April. Look what's going to happen. The weather's predicting it's going to snow and be very, very cold. So that could be interesting. I mean, in terms of this episode coming out, I don't know how that's going to work if I've got no <laughs> signal. Um, so it might be Monday by the by the time this episode comes out. Um, but we'll see. And we do have a guest today. Yes, we do. She was great. Yeah, so we spoke to Tara Norris, who plays for the USA. She was played for Southern Vipers and Southern Brave. She was really interesting to talk to yeah. in terms of, you know, she's come into cricket um, from a not the usual background. Yeah. Uh, yes, she was born in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, and uh, has ended up playing for the USA mm-hmm. and just finding out what cricket's like yeah. over in the USA, which is... <laughs> you know, not the place you'd expect to go and no. play cricket. Uh, definitely not. And yeah, I don't fancy ever explaining cricket to you in America. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it'd be quite interesting. Um, but she did actually sound a bit American. I don't know if you noticed that word she said. I was like, mm, okay, yeah, yeah, well, I'm interested in what our really listeners good. think. Yeah. yeah. So enjoy our chat with Tara Norris. <laughs> You were born in the USA and you grew up in Spain, is it? But you play cricket in England, but also play for the USA. Talk us through that whole thing, because it's a bit confusing. Um, yeah, it's um, it's all kind of up in the air, really. Um, yeah, I was born in the States, um, didn't live there for very long. Um, and then, yeah, my moved my family, moved to Barcelona and grew up there. Um, had never heard of cricket, didn't play any cricket until we moved to the UK. So I moved my dad's job. Um, and it was a kind of a way of me to make friends. Um, joined a school club of cricket, had no idea what it was. Picked it up pretty well, enjoyed it, quite enjoyed the team aspect to it. Um, and yeah, kind of, they put me into a girls cricket, uh, local club side, played for County, went up the pathway through there, um, did some England Academy stuff. And then this USA thing literally happened very last minute, very, um, I guess I wasn't expecting it at all. Literally got a phone call during the 100 last summer asking if there was any chance I could update my passport um, and if I fancied going out for a couple of tournaments, which I absolutely was all up for. Um, so, yeah, that kind of happened in a really weird way. Um, but, yeah, the rest is, yeah, I guess I just moved my family and, and picked it up and, and carried it on. 
So what is cricket like in the USA? I mean, I, it, I, I guess it is really, really fringe, really minority, but because it's such a big country, we're still talking about quite a significant number of people who play it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I was very, I put no expectations on it. It was pretty apprehensive as what to expect, um, but extremely open-minded to the whole situation and just excited to play some cricket for a little bit longer um, and in some cool countries as well. So the setup there is a little bit different. Um, was, yeah, like you said, it's such a massive country. To get a camp, I think it costs like $60,000 just to get every single player in one, in one hub, purely on transportation. Um, so they kind of do it in regions or states. So I was based out in California, um, in San Francisco, where one of the bases were. There's like the East Coast girls train together and then the West Coast girls train together. Um, but I think the main hubs are in Miami and Houston, I want to say. Um, but yeah, so pretty much it's, um, it's actually, I had no idea how big cricket was. Um, it's a big Indian population in California. So it's a big um, Indian fan base out there. Um, so yeah, when we played and trained, like the girls just absolutely loved it. They'd grown up playing cricket, their parents love cricket. Um, so it was a really quite different, um, it was a different experience for me, but really good to see like just how much the girls loved it. And also I coach as well. So these girls were the same age as, as girls that I coach back here and the level was completely different. Um, they just lived and breathed cricket, um, which was really cool to see. And at, like in your time in America, did you have to explain cricket to anyone, like specifically in America? um a few a few like genuine americans like in the street and stuff um but they thought it was amazing it was always the same like oh it's like baseball and you say yeah exactly exactly <laughs> just save the just save the conversation really but um yeah in terms like the girls were so switched on i suppose the only difference really was probably facilities we're very lucky um in the uk obviously having world-class facilities um at your fingertips really whereas obviously soccer and NFL and baseball are the main the main sports in America. So the facilities there are incredible, but in terms of cricket, obviously not being up there, um, that was probably where they, where they lacked the most really. And um, with Team USA, you got to go to World Cup qualifiers in Mexico and Zimbabwe, some pretty cool yeah. places. What was that whole experience like? Do you know, I am still pinching myself for going, um, just the whole experience. And I think the way it happened as well, um, I was just extremely grateful to be on the back of that tour um, and to meet some incredible girls, to play cricket and to play against um, the likes of Pakistan, Bangladesh. Um, it was just incredible. So, yeah, to go off that, to, well, I suppose to come off a, a pretty cool summer in, in the UK with 100, the RHF final, and then to play a bit more cricket. Um, yeah, just extremely grateful and lucky to, to be involved in that. Yeah, and I guess you got to experience play against teams also like, um, you know, Brazil, and teams that are like so upcoming. Um, what was that like? Because I guess as a professional cricketer back in England, it must you must have like quite an interesting perspective on it. Um, yeah, I guess it was different and, and challenging in different ways. Um, obviously, the the associate teams such as Brazil and Argentina and, and Canada are are going to be significant, or not significantly, but they are going to be behind in terms of funding and coaching staff um, and equipment, and I suppose exposure as well. Um, but you know, the, the amazing thing with Brazil is that all the female cricketers there are contracted, um, which even we don't have in the UK at the moment. And compared to the men's side, they have no contracted men's players. Um, so I thought that was amazing. Um, but yeah, I think just to be exposed to that was, was really cool. And, and to just to see how much the girls loved it out there, um, with very kind of limited funding, they absolutely loved playing their cricket. Um, and it was, yeah, really refreshing to see and, and also gave me a really good perspective. And again, I'm just extremely grateful to be a part of it and to meet these people as well. A lot of that is down to Roberta, I think. Uh, Roberta's a yeah. big, uh, uh, well, she's been on our podcast mm -hmm. and uh, she's, she's a big brilliant. supporter of us. And she uh, she's just such an inspiration, isn't she? And yeah, uh, she is. she's a kind of, she's a, a sort of Charlotte Edwards of Brazil, really. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, she seriously is a pioneer for Brazil cricket. And as soon as I met her, she came straight up to me after, after we played them and shook my hand and introduced her, my, herself to me. And just, you know, was just such a character and such a lovely person. Um, so, yeah, all the girls were. And um, going back to last summer, obviously the 100 was incredible and you've been retained by um, Southern Brave. So um, what was the 100 like from your perspective? Um, 
it was just the most incredible six weeks ever, really. I think for women's cricket, it's done absolute wonders. Um, I think the exposure we got as well was, was fantastic for the game. Um, and hopefully this year it will be the same. Um, the standards have obviously increased, which is brilliant um, as a result. But I think, yeah, just that exposure, which we were probably lacking, has really helped. You know, and all the feedback I got after the competition was, you know, people that weren't even watching cricket before were now watching the 100. People who had never ta really taken an interest in cricket were watching the 100 or they were only watching the girls' games. Um, so all the feedback we got was all positive, which is really good to hear. Um, and, yeah, to play alongside, obviously, world-class players and at world-class grounds. Um, I think the the marketing was brilliant. The way they marketed it was was fantastic. Um, so I think all the, I mean, they put so much hard work into it. it I don't think it could have gone badly, um, but I honestly had no idea how positive it was going to be. It has been amazing, hasn't it? And the marketing, the exposure it, it, alongside each other, it, it seems like after England won the World Cup, there was an opportunity there, which actually I don't think was taken. But actually now it's been taken with the 100 and, and it seems to me that the developments in the women's game over the last 12 months, which has been rapid, is just yeah. going to continue more and more and more. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Yeah, and, and I think, yeah, I suppose you're right, there was a, a definitely a market where post-World Cup we could have integrated something like that. Um, we had the KSL, which is obviously really good. But compare that to the hundred, it's a whole a whole next level in terms of professionalization um, and now domestic contracts as well. Um, yeah, no, I really I really hope this is just a start and and it's exciting for the the next generation to come through and see actually what the what the prospect is for them. And you referred to the domestic contracts. What difference has that made for you as a player? Oh, well, it's allowed me to train full time and 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 chase my dreams. Really, um, yeah, coming out of uni, I was I was very lucky. In terms of timing really um i had to make a decision am i going to work full time and, and try and train as well um and luckily yeah when the vipers phoned me up and, and offered me a contract it was the easiest decision i've ever made um so yeah to be able to train full time is fantastic and, and do something that i love and do it with the girls as well is, is brilliant and uh, vipers have been extremely successful what is the secret to the success Everybody asks this. Um, and honestly, if I knew, I would tell you. Um, no, I think we're, we're led by a brilliant coach, a uh, brilliant captain. Um, and yeah, I, I honestly don't know what it is. We're, as a group of individuals, we're all very different um, on and off the pitch. But yeah, when we all put on that Vipers top and, and go on that field, it's, it's electric. Um, I honestly can't explain it. Um, yeah, I don't know what the culture is, but it's it's a really good environment and we train hard um, and we want to win, obviously. Um, every team does. But yeah, I think we're led by a brilliant, a brilliant management team as well. And so you lifted the Rachel Hay of Lint uh, Cup last year, winning that final. You played quite a significant role in that game, as you remember. Yeah, I finally, well, managed to contribute somehow at the bat. Um, yeah, I... I I don't know what happened on the day, but um, I think after the, the Charlotte Edwards T20 comp, we were all pretty devastated that we didn't make it to the final. Um, obviously, the trophy being in our head coach's name. Um, so, yeah, I think that finals day was a, definitely a massive confidence boost for me um, and hopefully something I can continue to do for the team uh, for this next summer. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, people are saying you can only go for one trophy. So are you going to go for the third title for Rachel Hale Flynn or are you going to try and get Charlotte Edwards? We're going to try and go for both. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody wants. Um, yeah, no, to, to do three out of three would be incredible. And even just to get to final state at Lords, which is, again, a massive step for the women's game. Um, and actually to get a decent crowd would be really good. I think maybe one slight disappointment was after the big hype of the 100, the Rachel Hale Flynn final was, you know, a month later and sadly the the turnout was was pretty poor um which is such a shame because of all the hype and and all the awareness and exposure we were given um so yeah if to to play at laws would be amazing um and to get a decent crowd would be really cool as well um, we'll be at least two people though yeah we? amazing <laughs> Perfect. i can't wait That's yeah. What I want to hear. yeah so our, our plan is because england are playing the previous day i think at lords as well and so we've got tickets for both games and we'll, we'll do that over the weekend. Oh, we'll cool. Yeah. Amazing. Because I think one of the issues with sometimes the finals is that 
you know, from a Midlands perspective, they tend to be down south. And I think the one year it was at Edgbaston was when it was behind closed doors. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's like, I guess if someone supports, you know, like Northern Diamonds or Thunder, it's like, are they realistically going to be able to travel down to, you know, for example, the Aegeus Bowl, which is like, <laughs> like six, no, seven hours away from them. I'm um, a southerner. It's a far, it's a long way away. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think with it being at Lords, people will go just for the fact it's at Lords as well. And so, like, if you know, if it was you know, a GS ball, they might think, right, it's a long way to go to. You know, it's a good ground, but it's not Lords. Know, but if yeah, it's at yeah. Lords, people, I, I guess there's that draw, and and the fact that there's the England game the day before as well. Mm. Yeah. And I do, and I hope, hope the style of cricket we're playing as well. It's not just, oh well, so that you know, I support Yorkshire Diamonds. They're not going to be there, so I'm not going to go. I, I hope the whole kind of domestic structure is that you know, hopefully we're inspiring people. Yes, you know, we're inspiring locals of that region. But actually, can we just attract cricket fans who want to watch good quality cricket, domestic level, and hopefully we can put on a good show? Um, and yeah, with it being a Lords, I agree. Hopefully, it's it's a it appeals to a lot of people, and and Lords is a, an amazing place to play at. And um, were you playing at the game uh, against Thunder at Sale Cricket Club earlier in the year? I was. I Tell was us about that because it what just felt like the best game. <laughs> yeah, so it was, um, I think we might have potentially qualified maybe for finals day or maybe one before, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, we played at a very nice, lovely local cricket club ground um, and we got told that wasn't it uh which was it England India mm -hmm. yeah so yeah there was a COVID scandal COVID case that cancelled the the test match and a tweet went out saying oh if you guys want to watch some cricket there's a women's domestic game going on down the road at Sale Cricket Club and then we're, we're warming up and I'm kind of looking around and I can see a wizard a frog <laughs> I can see the Flintstones. I can see a blow up dinosaur. <laughs> oh, guys, what am I looking at right now? Um, honestly, and it kind of, it, it was a game where it wasn't really once, it wasn't one sided, but it wasn't really the most thrilling game. But all of a sudden this crowd just got really stuck in. Next thing, I reckon they made the most money they've ever made in their lives on this day. Um, there's beers flowing, there's coffees going, there's food going. Um, I'm getting absolutely heckled on the boundary by the, by the Flintstones. Um, so yeah, the, the crowd really got into it, which made it uh, way more entertaining. Um, and then what's even better is after the game, you know, everyone's chatting, the, the, the Flintstones, the frog, the wizard, they're all coming over chatting to the players. Um, they're playing on the ground. It was just, um, yeah, a very bizarre day, but really cool to actually have that exposure and people enjoy the level of cricket and, and yeah, to get, fans who actually have, I suppose, that detachment from the regional stuff and they're purely there just to watch some cricket. So yeah, that was that was really cool. And um, in the summer, there's uh, the Fairbreak Global Competition happening. Um, and what kind of your thoughts around that? Because it's a very exciting prospect, um, especially for, you know, associate nations. Yeah, I think it's a, an amazing opportunity for associate cricketers to play one with with different players, um, two with yeah some world class players, and three to be able to travel with it and, and play at some world class grounds. Um, again, I'm absolutely I'm buzzing to be going. I'm really excited that I'm going to be able to do all, all the above, um, and I think the exposure will be brilliant. And hopefully, yeah, kind of just drip feed that exposure, and and then the girls can take that back to their countries and say, look, we need to be doing this. X Y Z player are doing this. We should be training this. Um, so yeah, I think it's an amazing opportunity and I think I can't see it not being successful. Um, so if that's a yearly thing as well. And again, it's another opportunity for franchise cricket and, and for players to be able to play abroad and, and yeah, play against different players and teams. And I think the concept of mixing the teams as well will be really exciting. Can I show my ignorance at this point and maybe speak up on behalf of some of our listeners mm -hmm. who might not know what we're talking about at all. Can you explain what the Fair Break Global is? Yeah, sorry. So the Fair Break competition. Um, so I believe it's funded by um, like Hong Kong cricket, part of Hong Kong cricket and just um, stakeholders who are big cricket fans, essentially. So their idea is to introduce associate cricketers to a to a slightly better level. Um, and so they've invited 
I'm not sure how many, three or four or two or three players from each associate country um, and fully member cricket associate countries to be a part of this T20 tournament. So I think there'll be six teams completely mixed. So you'll have your Susie Bates from New Zealand in team one with Danny White from England, um, Roberta from Brazil, she'll be on that team. And the whole idea is that they're gonna mix the teams. So it'll be T20 still, you know, brilliant standards. Um, and the idea is that players can develop and learn and grow. Um, so it was originally meant to be in Hong Kong, um, but because of COVID restrictions, it's now in Dubai. So yeah, that'll take place um, later this year. Yeah, um, when we say like loads of associate nations, there are so many. I think there's like even Sweden oh, man and stuff. It's yeah, Papua amazing. New Guinea. Um, it, honestly, it's going to be so cool. Um, God, yeah, I'm trying to think off the top of my head now. I, I feel like I saw something from Hawaii, but I might just be making that up. <laughs> honestly, you name it, they'll they'll be there. Yeah. Um. So so far in your career, what's the best game you've ever played in? The best game. Um. What, for me personally, or just as in like performance or just the whole no, experience? I guess both, you can pick two then. Um, I tell you what, although we didn't win, um, 100 final at Lords last year was very, very special. Um, to play in front of that crowd and the atmosphere and again, like to have my family in the crowd was just incredible. Um, so yeah, despite the loss, it was, I don't think I'll ever experience anything like that again. What happens next with in terms of your your season? So so the the fixtures sort of start up in May time. Is that right? But do you have some uh, early season fixtures in April time before? Yeah. That? So first T Twenty. So the start of the Charlotte Edwards Cup is fourteenth of May. Mm -hmm. But before that, we've got quite a few inter squad games, a few warm up games against other teams, um, and then fair break actually takes place first two weeks of May um so i'll be away with that but yeah april we're gonna brave the cold and we normally actually have a pre-season friendly in the isle of Wight, um which is always good fun um there's about 30 of us that go um yeah a 50 over game in the freezing cold um so hopefully that'll be happening at some point and yeah just getting outside and just kind of getting to the groove of things again which um yeah it's very it's coming very close we've got our last bit of fitness testing for the winter next week and then yeah we're outside the the grass is being cut and yeah it's um it's going to be a pretty hectic summer tara thank you so much it's been it's no, been good to meet you and no, um, yeah likewise yeah and all the best to you um yeah for the for the season ahead i mean i, I know rivals are going to be in every final <laughs> and so i guess we'll, we'll, well hopefully we'll see you there Fingers yeah, yeah, see you yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's been great. So our thanks go to Tara. That was mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Oh, I am. I forgot. Forgot. Forgot to mention. Um, I did my EPQ presentation today. Now, just remind um, us what an EPQ presentation is. Extended project qualification. So um, I'm doing mine on the development of women's cricket and I had to do a presentation all about it. Um, anyway, just as the presentation before me was finishing, I was loading up mine. One of the teachers said, oh, I'd love to stay for yours, but I've got to go. I was like, oh, that's all right. And she goes, oh, well, what's it about? And I was like, oh, it's about the development of women's cricket in England. And she goes, oh, wait, are you going to be chatting about Rachel Hayho Flint? I was like, yeah, of course. And she was like, Oh, I used to walk her dog. I was like, what? So this teacher that I've known since I was like 11, turns out used to be Rachel Hayho Flint's dog walker. So I said, we need to have a conversation about this. So yeah. I think after Easter, I'm gonna go and have a big conversation because I'm like, I want to know everything. I was like, how did this come about, all of this? Um, so it's quite remarkable. That is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Rachel Hayho Flint's dog. I wonder what sort of dog she has. <laughs> no, I was thinking about that. Maybe Jack Russell. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, that's the only dog breed I know. <laughs> um, shall we talk about next week's guest? Yes. Now, this is this is a funny one because I said to you, Polly, mm -hmm. right, it's the World Cup final. Mm -hmm. We need to get a World Cup winner on the yeah. pod. There's your task. You've got one yeah. job. Sort it out. <laughs> and you have been getting in touch with 
every obscure World Cup <laughs> winner from the last few decades. You know, people who were non-playing squad members in yeah. the 1990s <laughs> of various teams. Mm -hmm. And absolutely no one got back to you on, no. on social media. And then this week, you nipped down to watch some cricket. And who did you bump into? I bumped into Mark Robinson. <laughs> so I saw on Mon Monday, yeah, Monday, that uh, Warwickshire versus Worcestershire warm up game was happening. And I was like, do you know what? Why not pop down after school and go and watch some cricket? Um, in fact, my last lesson was cancelled of the day. So I went a bit earlier and I went down to Edgebaston. I was like, I can get some work done whilst I'm here and watch the cricket. So I did that. And it was a really nice hot sunny day, probably the last hot day we've had. Um, and I noticed, I, I knew Mark Robinson obviously was the head coach of Warwickshire. Um, and I saw him walking with some of the players and he was speaking to this little boy who wanted a photo sign. So he went up to the change room to sign that, uh, get all the players to sign it. And um, on his way back down, um, he said to me, oh, you're working from home? And I was like, no, I'm actually in sick form. I'm just getting some work done. I just left school early. He was like, oh, what, what do you study for level? And I was like, oh, history, media, politics, EPQ. Mm. Hoping he goes, oh, what's an EPQ? And I tell him about the women's cricket thing. He didn't. He goes, oh, what history do you do? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I do American Civil Rights, War of the Roses and Cold War. He goes, oh, the Cold War. Started chatting to me about the Cold War. I was like, right, this mm. is not a conversation I ever thought I'd have with Mark Robinson. So then anyway, he goes off and I continue with my work. And um, on the way back home, I say to you, I bumped into Mark Robinson. And um, I was like, oh, I chickened out though. I didn't ask him to come on the podcast. And you're like, oh no, but you, you need to chat to him something. Maybe you should try and find him tomorrow. And I went onto Twitter and dropped him a message. And he was like, yeah, of course, that'll be fine. So then we organised it. I saw him yesterday on Tuesday. Um, didn't have a chat with him because he was just chatting to someone else. But um that was incredible. Um, yeah. So, so, so those of you who don't know, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Robinson uh, was the coach of England's women when yeah. they won the World Cup in 2017. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have a photo of him holding the trophy on my phone yeah. from when we when we were there. Um, so really interesting to talk to him. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. Yeah. I really enjoyed that conversation. So yeah. he's coming up next week. Yeah. So in terms of next week we don't really know what's going to happen. Mm. And this is the difficult thing. So if England win, we are going to have to do an emergency podcast. From a field in Wales. This is the issue. Can you find a phone box, a public call box? <laughs> to be fair, what I think we could end up doing mm -hmm. is if when I start walking, mm -hmm. we have I, have, I get my group to pause. Hopefully they'll be empathetic. Mm -hmm. And I ring you hopefully there might be a signal yeah. we record it and then i just like edit a little bit and then we put it out there no way or we just wait till i get back but that'll be the evening so that'll be like 12 hours after it's happened so we never know but then also on the 5th of april i think the 100 announcements come out yeah. so we're going to do an emergency episode for that so there could be a lot of episodes this week um that's so exciting so it's very dependent on if England win. So in some ways, I don't want England to win, but every other way I do. <laughs> um, so we shall see. Um, but just know there will there will be an episode talking about the World Cup final because, I mean, it's important. But you can keep up with us on our social media because that will be a lot easier to post uh, very quickly. Yes, we'll um, let you know on that. And I know... Loads of the England team listen to our pod really? religiously. Really? Would you, um, to be fair, our listeners have gone up in New Zealand, but suspicious. <laughs> uh, and so I, I know you're listening to this. Mm -hmm. I know you'll have won your Sammy against South Africa. I don't say that now because this podcast will come out after the thing. And just to say, we're proud of you. <laughs> we're rooting for you mm -hmm. uh, to go and beat the Aussies in the final. Um, and. But even if you don't, we're really proud of everything you've achieved mm -hmm. so far. Yeah, and I'll I'll still cry because I'll be happy when we got to the final. So <laughs> it'll be a good day either way, um, and I'm very excited for it. Mm -hmm.